I want to ask, I'm, I'm pretty sure most of us have had a coffee before. Sometimes we can't actually survive without coffee. Some people first thing in the morning, they must have a coffee. Now when we think of coffee, what do we think of? If I were to say, for example, pizza, what would you think of? Which country would you think of? Italy. If I was to say sushi, what would you think of? Japan. So there are certain things that you associate with certain things. Now if I were to say coffee, what would we think of? Brazil. Some people might think of Colombia. Some people think of Italy. However, I just want to look a little bit first at the history of coffee. Hey, and you're going to understand that there is something Islamic about this in the ends. Coffee itself, the word actually comes from Arabic. In Arabic, the words call this drink Qahwa. Qahwa is the drink that comes out from the bun, from the coffee bean. So they call this uh, thing Qahwa. Now Qahwa, it comes from the verb Qahiya, which means to lose one's appetite. Because the Arabs knew that when you drink a lot of coffee, khalas, you don't want to eat any more after this. So they would usually have it after their meals. Now the word Qahwa, it spread from Yemen to the rest of Arabia until it went to the Ottoman Empire. Because the Arabs were the first ones to drink coffee. And the Ottomans, the Ottomans really revolutionized coffee. I mean, Arabs like coffee. Ottomans and the Turks loved coffee. You'd find that they couldn't survive without coffee. This was every single Ottoman would be drinking it. To the point that many of the scholars of the Ottoman Empire, they stipulated that of course, as we know as Muslims, a man has to spend on his wife. He has to supply her with a house, with food, with clothing. Otherwise, if he can't do this, it's grounds for divorce. Now, the Ottoman Fuqaha also specified that he must give her enough coffee. Otherwise, it was enough to call for a divorce. So the Ottomans loved their coffee. However, the Ottomans, as most of us know, as the Turks today, they can't pronounce the letter wo. Instead of wo, they say it like v. You've heard Ottoman, uh, Ottomans, you've heard Turks when they say, say for example, wallah. What do they say? They say valla. So you see the wall turns into a V. This is common in their speech. So the word kahwa, they couldn't say kahwa. So they started to call it kahva. Now kahva, when it began to spread, when the Ottoman Empire was attacking a lot of the nations of Europe, there was a specific time. It was actually the last instance of offensive jihad in our ummah. This was the last time in the history of our ummah that the Muslims made an offensive jihad when the, when the Ottomans were attacking Austria. So they were attacking Austria and Poland who were united at that time. Now they were defeated in this battle it was called the second siege on Vienna. And so when they were defeated, as you know, when you leave the battlefield, you leave behind all of your things, the ghanima, your weapons, your treasures. And part of their ghanima, of course, was their coffee. Because even the Ottoman army, everywhere they went, they had coffee and people to make their coffee. So they left behind their bags of coffee and the, uh, the Austrians and the Polish first, you know, for the first time discovered this new drink. So they asked many of the Turkish soldiers, what is this drink? So they said, this is called kahva. And so eventually he got the name kava. And then from the name kava, it turned into kafa, then into kafe. So you'd see that this drink was a Muslim drink. You see that this drink was a Muslim drink. For a long time, the Pope forbade Christians from drinking this. The Pope, he gave like a fatwa and he said, Christians are not allowed to drink coffee. It is haram for them. Until a while later, one of the later Popes, he decided to reverse this decision. He got a bag of coffee and he baptized it in the church. So he said, now coffee is a Christian drink. Now this story, the reason why I mentioned this is as I said, when we start to introduce history, I like to suggest that we know nothing. Every day we drink coffee. Most of us won't even know about this. This Islamic history. When there was a point that just drinking coffee could get you thrown out of the Catholic Church. You'd be accused of being a Muslim. Nowadays, everyone drinks coffee. But very, very few people know about this history.